ministers and uh, my colleague in charge of uh, higher education research and TVET uh, from Ghana, from Nigeria, from Djibouti, and uh, the colleague minister who have just left from Uganda. Uh, my colleague, ministers of state uh, in the Ministry of Education in Rwanda, the Professor Jeffrey Sachs, Director of Sustainable Development Solution Network and the Earth Institute of Columbia University, our friend Mr. Kato from JICA, uh, Dr. Berai Begashore, Director of Sustainable Development Center for Africa, uh, distinguished uh, the panelists, be it uh, the panel yesterday, today, university presidents, uh, vice presidents, chancellors, and vice chancellors, and delegates from different universities uh, from different parts of the African continent and beyond, distinguished uh, participants in your various capacities, ladies and the gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. <laughs> Indeed, it's um, my great uh, privilege and honor to deliver closing remarks of this two-day conference dubbed Mobilizing African Intellectuals towards the quality tertiary education, which was organized by Sustainable Development Goal Center for Africa, and brought together around 300 intellectuals from 30 countries, including 25 countries uh, from Africa and the other five countries from outside Africa. As we are all aware, the overall goal of this conference was to kick off discussion to explore solutions and build consensus on practical actions that can be undertaken right away to address the pertinent issues of underperforming higher education system throughout our continent. Ladies and gentlemen, as it was clearly stated during the key note address and opening session of this conference, that Africa's achievement of access to education is to be recognized and acknowledged. But this is not enough to sustain our dignity as human beings. The need for quality of education in general and higher education for development of our countries and the region in the attainment of the sustainable development goals and the African Union Action 2063 cannot be overemphasized. And the unprecedented levels of social demand for quality education have arisen from the expansion of primary and secondary education, in part resulting from the Education for All movement. In a growing number of countries, including Rwanda, lower secondary education has become part of compulsory basic education cycle, and thus the pressure on the access to upper secondary education and universities is mounting. This upsurge in student enrollment has burdened the higher education system, making it difficult to keep up with the global standards of education that can have a catastrophic impact on the African and the world economy. This can be attributed to the inadequate funding, which is often provided by central governments with minimal support from the private sector. The role of government as the main source of funding 
has undermined the value of educators and intellectuals' property, viewing their contribution as a civil service that is government compliant. As was rightly put during discussion through the conference, the academic research for policy information and policy influence will not make African universities change. Change makers on its own are the investment in higher education subsector is always considered along with other placing development priorities. Hence, there is an urgent need to engage in a triple helix partnership between the government, private sector, and the academia, and find innovative ways to invest in and deliver quality tertiary education to ensure sustainable transformation of our continent and hence achieve sustainable development goals. This uh, will be one of the major contributing factors in transforming our universities into recognized and reputable institutions at a global level. Consider the growing rates of youth and unemployment rates on the African economy. There is equally a placing need to heavily invest in entrepreneurship, innovation, and the technique and vocational education and training to produce middle career technicians with the adequate hands-on skills to meet the market demand and job creation. Much as the investment in research and development is important to transform the Africa's economy, just as the emerging economies such as China, South Korea, Brazil, and uh, many more, it is equally important uh, or even more important to recognize the importance of information technology and the need to, have, to heavily invest in this sector as we need to fast track the delivery of quality education in general and tertiary education in particular. Uh, during the deliberations at this conference, it was noted that uh, once wisely and uh, appropriately invested in information and technology, the current era can make a tremendous role in leapfrogging the quality of tertiary education through partnership with the well-established universities and having access to free or less costly libraries, professors via virtual classrooms, internet-based laboratories, etc., etc. Particularly for Rwanda, with the, our top leadership belief in science and technology for sustainable transformation, and taking into consideration the global rapid digital change, the government of Rwanda decided to heavily invest in ICT infrastructure including availing broadband across the countries and provision easy access to digital devices, among others, to achieve policy actions in all sectors of the economy, including education, health, agriculture, and so forth and so on. Moreover, the government of Rwanda decided to engage and invest in regional and international partnership approaches to ensure economies of scale and to bring in the best practices that exist elsewhere in the world. This resulted into physical bringing to Rwanda the reputable universities and research institutions. Just a few to mention, the CMU, the presence of AIMS, the ICTP, African Leadership Universities, and quite other number centers. It is worth noting that the benefit of the above mentioned partnership will not be enjoyed by Rwanda only, but Africa as a whole. The success of these partnerships and many more to come will be a result of cross collaborations among African countries, government, private sectors, and the academia. I seize this opportunity to commend the efforts and the commitment 
put in place by some African countries which have in the World Bank African Centers of Excellence projects with the aim to train at the highest level a new generation of Africans who can develop and apply science as well as the partnership for skills and the applied science, engineering, and technology with the objective to strengthening applied science, engineering, and technology assets, contributing to the socioeconomic transformation in Sub-Saharan Africa through massive quality PhD training in the ACT programs. As I conclude uh, these remarks, I call upon each one's effort to jointly put in actions the resolutions or what he has just read out as the important outcome of this conference. I also wish to echo uh, the calling by Director General of the SDG Center for Africa that uh, looking at the discussions we had for the last two days, the problem is not to know what we are suffering from. I think we have done a fair deal of uh, diagnostic of what our education system is suffering. It is now time to prescribe the right medicine and injection so that we can get the cure. And um, looking at the statements from the colleague ministers, uh, from uh, the vice chancellors on behalf of others, uh, from the people who spoke since yesterday up to now, I'm pretty confident that uh, we are all mobilized enough to put into the actions uh, these resolutions. But again, we know this is, the, is not the end of the conversation. This conference was meant to kick off discussion and come up with the practical solutions. So the conversation shall continue either at the continental level or at subcontinent level or at the country level. But the thing is, we cannot in a conversation forever. Each conversation, it has to be translated into the practical actions so that the conversation of the tomorrow will be for the challenge of the tomorrow, but having solved the challenge of today and yesterday. I wish to, once again, to sincerely thank uh, my colleague ministers, be it from Rwanda, be it from other countries, and the delegates which represented the governments from other African uh, continent. Your support, your solidarity is very important. And with this kind of the support and the solidarity, for sure, we shall be able to achieve these endeavors. I again want to thank the Sustainable Development uh, Goal Center um, for Africa for this, uh, what is called Rwanda Initiative. Uh, thank you. And you can count on the government of Rwanda's commitment to your endeavor but also in collaboration with the other African nations. I want to thank very much Professor Jeffrey Sachs for your lifetime commitment to the sustainable development of this world and humanity as such. You are contributing contribution through SDSN, through the SDGs, and through this conference. It has been amazing, and we continue to count on your support and wisdom as we move forward. Thank you very much. I want to thank the vice, the, the chancellors, and the, the commitment you made. I want to thank the organizing teams, the teams from SDG Center for Africa, the team from the Office of the President. Thank you very much. The team from my ministry, the Minister of Education, uh, your organization has been amazing. Thank you very much, and at this note, um, again, privileged and humbled to declare this conference officially closed. Thank you so much. <laughs>